Sarah Hill, the CEO and co-founder of Bookster. We are here today with Julia Indichova. She is the author of Inconceivable, A Woman's Triumph Over Despair and Statistics. Julia, hello. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on today. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I also got to do a very short interview with you yesterday on uh, Bold TV. So um, it's my pleasure now I get to speak to you twice this yes. week. Uh, so let's get to it. I think that this is a remarkable story and for the women out there, uh, particularly those who are, who are having trouble conceiving um, or thinking about conceiving and might uh, have problems down the road, I think this book is something that you must read. It's actually uh, 20 years old, but if you go and look at Amazon or anywhere on the web, uh, people are still very much using it as a resource. And you have turned this into a website and kind of a brand as well. Um, Maybe let's start with that and then let's get to the book. Can you tell us sure. uh, the website that you've started and what sure, that is? Sure, sure. Uh, the website and, it, and uh, the community okay. is called FertileHeart.com. And I founded FertileHeart.com because it's the kind of support that I wish I would have had when I was first diagnosed. I wish that I could have had the resources, that I could have had the you know, the, the, the supportive circle and some guidance that would have helped me turn this challenge into something that is a journey of self-discovery and healing and not something that is, you know, this heart-wrenching journey of, of defeat, of, of yeah. feeling defeated and broken, which is, which is what what that diagnosis can can do to us absolutely um, and you know the the story is actually it's it's yes it is for women who are thinking of uh, conceiving and thinking of having babies and for women who have trouble conceiving but but actually it's a story it's really a story about about a life challenge and if we are doing the human gig chances are we are going to be facing life challenges and it's about you know receiving the life challenge and turning that kind of challenge into into an opportunity it's so beautiful um also for those of you who are watching uh we are taking questions live so uh put your questions in the comments and we will get an answer for you uh, from Julia, who I can very confidently say is an expert on this subject. So um, I know you have people who are writing in and who have been writing in to you for like 20 years. So um, if you have questions, go ahead, put them in the comments, and we can try and give you an answer um, right now. Uh, so, so Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to make this stuff on you. <laughs> okay, go for it. Yes. I, I shy away from calling myself a, an expert, okay. you know, and I'm actually not sure that I will be able to shoot out answers to everybody who, who posts comments because that's, that's at the heart of my work, yeah. is that what, what my work is about, it, it's about supporting women and couples uh, in becoming their own highest experts on their fertility. Mm -hmm. that, which, you know, it, it doesn't mean that you don't consult doctors. It doesn't mean that you are not, that you don't get tested. It doesn't mean that you are, you, you know, you don't learn about the diet and, you know, your hormone levels and your thyroid testing and your adrenals. It doesn't mean any of that, but that ultimately you then turn to yourself mm -hmm. and say, well, does this make sense to me? Sure. Uh, because because that's, that's what turned into such an opportunity for me. Do, does that make sense? Yes, it does, definitely. Okay, so <clears throat> opportunity, yes. Um, <laughs> I, know, I do believe it is an opportunity, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. I love it when someone can put me on the spot, it's wonderful. <laughs> We are conceiving something together. Yes, you know, it's yes, like yes. We, we, we have, okay, this is the way the interview is going to go. And then this is, I mean, which is, which is what life is, yeah, right? Absolutely. It's like, okay, this is the way it's going to go. I'm going to, you know, find a man uh, at 
at ideally, yeah, yeah. right? And then I'm going to have a baby at 32. And then I will, you know, still finish my PhD by 35. And yeah. I'll have a second child by 37. And then, you know, life says, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, maybe there's another way to do this. Yeah. So we can buy into this idea of the statistics. We can buy into the fact that at 35 it's over for us and we can get, we can really get sucked into what I call the panic of the last good egg. You know? Oh no. And, yeah. and we, but, but we also have a, we have a choice. We have, we have a choice in how we take care of ourselves and, in, in, and it certainly makes a difference. Uh, we can decide um, whether what we do counts or it doesn't count. I mean, there's the, the, official, the official definition of infertility, and tell me if that doesn't sound crazy to okay. you. It, you know, I hope it sounds crazy to everybody out there, is that after a year of unprotected intercourse, when you are under 35, if you, if you go through a year of unprotected intercourse and you're not pregnant, and if you're over 35, if you go through six months of unprotected intercourse, you are diagnosed, you are so-called infertile. Ooh. And the minute you get this label, you know, words, words are powerful tools of creation. Mm -hmm. So the minute somebody says that to you, and then says, you know, you better hurry up. And actually, oh, I mean, forget it. If you're at four, if you're, you know, if you're 40 or over, and yeah. I was, how old was I? I was 42 when I was first diagnosed. And so if you were 40 and over, it's like five minutes. Have you been trying for five minutes? Or not even, you know, it's, it's, it's actually like not even five minutes. It's, it's if you, I mean, I have women who come to my workshops and they, they say, oh, I mean, I expect it to have trouble. I mean, it's, they get tested and then they get, um, you know, something in, in their hormone levels is off and, and they're immediately going to this, this panic mode. So... So we can do that, yeah. I mean, and, um, and especially, you know, for, for the millennials, for the younger millennials out there, it's so important to, you know, to pay attention, not just to the, you know, to your smoothies. I mean, your smoothies are great and, and your green juice, that's great. You know, wheatgrass is awesome. Uh, but also to pay attention to the ideas that you listen to. Uh, so what do you mean by um, like what you, you're choosing, kind of what you're mm. listening to? And what do you mean? Like, yeah. do you mean yeah. like who you're speaking to, what yeah. you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to? Yes. Like music? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wonderful question. Consciousness is contagious. It's really contagious. I mean, that's, that's where our hope is, mm -hmm. that we can, that whatever consciousness we create, the, you know, the good kind mm -hmm. is spreads. But the, the consciousness that feeds into our fears of childlessness is extremely powerful. There is a, you know, the prediction for the fertility industry for 2020 is over a 20, that it's going to grow into a, a more than $20 billion industry. Wow. And so it's up to you, also millennials out there, whether some of that money is going to be channeled toward wind turbines and biodynamic farms. Uh, fertility clinics are fantastic. I am totally in favor of people using assisted reproduction uh, when it is useful. I have lots of, if you go on my web, on, on our website, perlohar.com, and you look under the, you know, testimonial drop down, you're going to see that there are testimonials uh, from women who conceived through egg donation, women who conceived through adoption, women who conceived through, you know, um, who had natural pregnancies in their 40s. So it's not about bashing, you know, technology, medical technology. It's, 
mean, we need it, yeah. right? It's, it's extremely useful. But you want to make sure that you don't use medical technology to silence whatever it is that is calling for attention, oh, you know? So, yeah. so when I say, you know, you're asking, what do I mean by feeling, choosing, feeling, yeah. thinking for yourself? I mean, that's, that's what was so cool about this so-called devastating disease mm -hmm. is that for the first time in my life, really for the first time in my life, I gave myself permission to do my own thinking, mm -hmm. you know, when it came to, to this major life challenge. I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to write a book if I hadn't gone through this experience. You yeah. know, it, it really was the very first time where I, where it was lucky. I mean, yeah. it was my great luck yeah. that the experts could not help me because I would not have gone through this. Well, you know? and I can only imagine how many people now are thankful that you went through it as well because you've helped them, you know, them or their child, uh, you know, be brought on to earth, which well, is insane. Well, I am, uh, I am incredibly blessed, uh, you know, for being able to do this work and, and engaging with people in, in such, a, such an intimate way. It's like, it's the best job <laughs> I ever had. I could not have come up with, you know, speaking yeah, of the yeah, plan, yeah. we were talking yeah. about the plan. There's no way that I could have planned this. It's like For sure. life has an HR department. <laughs> <laughs> that says, okay, this is a good job for you, Julia. 